All right, just a very quick video here. Uh, I'm looking for a cheap way or an inexpensive way to have a charger for our power walls, right? Um, we're gonna do, there's two types of power walls. There's off-grid power walls that are charged off of, you know, solar and stuff. And then there's the AC couple devices like Tesla's. And I'm exploring into how to do that. But in order to make one of those, then that means I'm gonna have to have an onboard charger and onboard um, inverter, right? So the inverter, I think we I got one that is gonna work. Uh, now I'm looking for the charger, but it has to be, you know, affordable. Something that is doesn't cost hundreds of dollars, right? So, so here's what I'm testing. This is, it's like a 300 watt power supply. One of our, or my partners, you know, in the recycling business has a lot of them. I think he's got pallets and pallets of them. And I think he said he's going to sell them for like $10 or something, $10, $15. And that's cool. That's what I'm testing here. So the, the only thing is that these are 36 volts. Oh, the fan just kicked in, right? So a 36 volts is about 300 watts, right? You can run it harder, probably like up to 500 watts if you put a fan. I don't have a fan on this guy yet. I'm just doing some tests. But then I got this thing. This thing's supposed to be rated at 40 amps, which is a, a full voltage of 60 amps in, 60 amps out, I think, or 60 volts in, 60 up to up to 90 amp uh, volts out. Should be able to do about 1800 watts, right? Of course, yeah, I don't know about that, right? So I we set it up right now. This is connected, 36 volts going in here. Uh, is pushing 51 volts out into my pack over there. This is supposed to be a 48 volt pack and I'm checking the, the individual. Look at that, these are not very well balanced because I just threw those together in there, but that's okay. So anyways, it's putting 5.5 amps into it. So about 280 or 277 watts right now. And it's been running like that for a little while now. Um, and the fan is kind of starting. So definitely this thing can handle 300. I mean, yeah, it's supposed to be able to handle up to 40 amps, right? I'm only doing five on the output, about six on the input. Or wait a minute, it's the lower. Yeah, more probably more, seven or something like that. Let's look at how these uh, components are doing thermally. All right, here we go. Ooh, 47 degrees. Yeah, so the uh, power supply is running kind of hot. Yeah, it's 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 running hot, right? It's like up there where you you don't want it push it any harder. Look at that. It's in the 50, 60 degrees in there. Um you definitely need a fan at this point, right? Now, on the other side, this guy this guy is chugging along no problem, as it should, if it if it truly is able to, you know, handle 40 amps. Here we go, it's 42 degrees, that's the, uh, those are the MOSFETs. Yeah, one of them's a MOSFET, the other one's uh, I don't know. I, and the batteries, of course, are, oh, look at that, there is something here what why is that one hot oh i'm gonna have to check that there it is what that's in the connector why is the connector hot i don't get it that's interesting resistance of some kind because look at that that's not even connected to anything. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if I should uh, take that board out and replace it, because what's happening there? Anyways, let's move along here. All right, let's change this guy. Uh, let's put a bigger one in there and really put this through his paces. I want to do at least 20 amps. That's what this battery should be able to handle. And for that, of course, we have this guy. Remember this? This is supposed to be able to give us, um, yeah, 2,000 uh, watts. So <laughs> this will be able to put out like 
50 amps or something. So, plenty of power there. Let's let's change that up. All right, here we go. Now we're with this big guy, 2,000 watt capable power supply. And then this one is throttled down to about 500 watts. Uh, so I'm putting 500 watts into that battery. We'll see how it goes. I, theoretically, I want to run this around 1,000 watts. That's my target so that a power wall that is charging at night, for example, will be able to charge, uh, you know, about six kilowatts in, you know, in six hours or something like that. And by the way, uh, when I'm talking about affordable, this, each one of these is like $25 on eBay, right? So this is $50. That's like $30 on AliExpress, right? So yeah, we're talking about... What do we say 50 60 70 80 so under a hundred dollars here for to be able to to do uh you know to be able to do uh, well right now 500 we'll see how the temperatures are this fan has kicked in right now so definitely let's look at let's look at this setup uh with the thermal camera now all right here we go this is what it looks like this guy is not breaking a sweat because it can handle that the cables are okay yeah see here we go this thing is running a bit hot so the problem with this at this setup right this is uh 24 volts oh actually it's 24 volts into 48 volts yeah so we're stepping up the limitations here is the amperage right and right now on the low side is running around 21 volts which is about half of what this little unit can do so theoretically at this setup at this voltages this unit could only go about a thousand watts but at that you'll be running it at max a peak and most definitely won't be able to run for six hours uh doing that so definitely we'll have to change this the setup yeah, look at that MOSFET there. That's that's running around 50 hertz. I mean, 50 degrees. And you can hear the fan going. Okay, let's look at our batteries. Our batteries are getting about 10 amps. And once again, that thing there. Ooh, what is that? 32, so 32 is not that bad, right? Is it loose? Ooh, I think I just that is a big mystery here what that is that is on the connector that should not be hot uh, I think I'm gonna have to replace that board with another one because well it should not be running hot I have another board there you know that's an anomaly that you know having one of these thermal cameras will definitely help you because if you have something like that that is unexplainable something in there is creating heat in that one connector it's not connected to anything i don't even have the ribbon cables on there so you know that's a, i think it's probably a flaw on the connector somehow something's <laughs> taking energy and producing heat so there we go Let's let that run there for a little while and then we'll come back. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now I'm running this big guy. It's running around 30 amps. Uh, this thing turns off after a while. Uh, yeah, 31 amps, right? So I'm still, you know, below about 75% about of the capacity of this guy. Uh, these are running, you know, 700 amps this could do 2000 uh i'm pushing what 12 amps or uh, 13 amps into these there's six you know boards in a row so two amps into each one so i'm i'm running you know 50 percent on this guys this one's 75 percent this one's less you like you know 40 percent or something so everything's running under peak and so and now it's been running for well, almost an hour. I mean, I'm, I'm always completely charged here. Oh, okay. So here we go. All the cells are, you know, pretty close to being, um, 
balanced and I replaced this board and I threw the other one away because it had some weird thing with the connector and then I plugged them you know the balance leads all together so that I can monitor all the cells that they're you know balanced or whatever now let's look at this setup with the thermal camera to see how it's doing after you know uh, whatever 20 40 minutes or whatever it's been running the power supplies are running warm right about 50 degrees C in there yeah so they're, they're the fan is on and it's pushing air now this guy oh my god 83 C yeah that's pretty hot uh, yeah if you were to touch that there it would burn your hand right let's look at the MOSFETs also that fan it's been going on now kinda. well so it turns out so it turns out that's hotter that's the hottest piece there the MOSFETs actually running cooler than that at 76 degrees centigrade or uh, Celsius or whatever yeah and how about the caps yeah the caps are, are they're cold they're cool so it's basically that that thing right there that inductor is the one that is running hot um, it's weird that it's kind of glued together to those caps which means that it's heating up those caps is that I don't know that's a good thing there now let's look at the batteries the battery should be okay battery should not be very hot because we're not pushing them that hard you want to go up there Bruce and of course there's we don't have that hot spot here anymore um, yeah the cells are you know they're not really hot at all they're just you know warm because they're charging and they're almost all the way up to charge so the big question here is if this guy that is set up to quit at 58 volts is going to quit at 58 volts right now it's still pushing 630 watts out of the 700 that i originally set it up so maybe it's tapering down just because it's getting there right 57 point uh 57.53 volts so it's within half a volt of its target we should now start seeing that thing taper down and if it does then uh you know and it's got the right charging curve for lithium right constant current constant voltage right so it'll it'll stay at 58 volts after you know it goes into the second stage 58 constant volts and then it'll just taper down the amperage so now let's see if it'll actually do it So it looks like it's settled at 58.2 volts and of course to set that you have to turn that little set screw there so I thought I'd set it at exactly 58 but I set it at 58.2 a couple of the cells are a bit high here at 4.3 uh, this is not super balanced correctly this half of the pack is a little bit higher than these this side, the highest one is at 4.1, where this one's at 4.23, right? So yeah, we'll have to balance that. And actually, this thing is actually bringing all these cells down. It's probably gonna take a long time. But anyways, this shows how this guy here can charge 
uh, 48-volt battery or a 48-volt, uh, you know, power wall, you know, at a rate of, uh, what did we do, 700 watts? I think we did 700 watts here, you know. It, this was running kind of hot, but, you know, if we put a fan in there, hopefully that will run a lot cooler. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to do some more testing and see how far we can push this without it uh, stressing too much. And this could be a, you know, a way to charge a, you know, a power wall right off of, uh, you know, the grid. Or if you have grid tie inverters, like solar system, right, during the day, you plug this in there, you set this to charge your, your power wall and the energy that your solar panels are creating on the roof instead of going to the grid it just goes through here and it goes into your batteries so yeah it would look something like this right with an inverter and a charger and then the rest of it batteries and this would be a standalone power wall where you just plug it into the wall tell it to charge you know from this hour to that hour when there's sun and then tell it to discharge you know for the next few hours so that's what i'm uh experimenting with uh one of these days uh i'm gonna finish it's just a lot of work to be done with these guys all right thank you for watching this video good night and we'll see you in the next one